I'm sure it can be done as five different films, maybe ten different films is possible. But I think um, the budget that we had <laughs> did not allow more than this. I think two is it. Two is good enough. <laughs> <laughs> and with, with him again, I told you about the trust. When he trusts you so much, you feel like tyranny. You feel like, oh my God, what am I going to do? So I'll score it with the keyboard, and he'll say, "Oh, this is fine." I said, "No, no, it's not fine. We'll get rear brass from you know Budapest, and we'll get Philadelphia Orchestra, we'll get Chennai strings to do this stuff. It's sounding good. Why is he doing this stuff?" Mm -hmm. And then when you think you haven't hit it, is when he's like already moved from behind the camera. It's a cut, and he's gone. And you're like thinking mm -hmm. that worked. Like what happened? But he knows what he got. And it's just about keeping that search. I, I never scream. You I never scream. I start screaming. <laughs> no, it, you start <laughs> screaming. <laughs> yeah. So lovely to have the three of you on Film Companion. Um, congratulations on PS One. The trailer is spectacular. Cannot wait to see the film. Uh, there's also other things to celebrate. Uh, it's 30 years of Mani Ratnam and A R Rahman. Yeah. <laughs> what a formidable body of work the two of you have created, and I just wonder, when from Roja to PS One, how do you um, see each other's sort of evolution as artists? Have you changed a lot? Has your working style changed a lot? He may dance it differently. <laughs> <laughs> I may dance it differently. That's so. Who's so. going first? <laughs> No, I don't think it's really changed at all. I think he's just evolved, you know. And I've remained in the same place, and he's kind of evolved. And I think the the spark that we saw when his first film came, the desire and the search. I remember first in Roja when he did compose the tune and gave it to me, and it was just outstanding. And if you tell him it's outstanding, it's not enough. He'll mm. keep at it, you know, and that doesn't change at all until today. It's just the same thing. I think the kind of work that he's done for PS One and this background score that he's it's done amazing. is just yeah. just yeah. outstanding. Yeah. Yes. And do you find him changed in any way? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, um... three decades later, you're both the same. Yeah, I think we are both searching for the same thing, mm -hmm. which is what excellence and imagination always. How lovely! And uh, you know, when we know that the commonality is that, and so when he trusts me so much, that's tyranny for me. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I get, oh my god, what do I do? I don't think he'll just throw it on my face. I I can't give this. So I do my censorship before I give it to him, and sometimes I just give him like vocal note. I I get I'm on flight. Hey, how about this tune, sir? I like this. So recently, I scored like a six-minute sequence in the movie, and I was like really proud of it. I'd done, you know, like forty different parts and strings and brass and percussion. I said, "Man, I've just synced it and nailed it." <laughs> and they said, "What about this? Three months back, you gave a tune, can you put it?" I said, "Oh my God!" <laughs> so I had to throw it all, and he was right because it was generic what I did, and right. then he had a purpose in bringing that tune into that. So he has that. Uh, Objective vision mm. about even music, so I trust blindly. I'm ready to throw anything for us. How and sometimes I say like, "Did you miss this?" <laughs> <laughs> so Nenjikula, which is a big hit, I thought he was going to pick it up. He didn't pick up. He picked up Mungil Totem. Then I said, "Why don't you pick up?" So he picked up both the tunes, which are meant for one situation. <laughs> it's also 25 years of Aishwarya and Mani Ratnam. Mm. Iruvar was in 1997. You're counting. I am not. <laughs> <laughs> But how amazing that the three of you have have you know such an enduring journey. Uh, you of course have all, always called him guru, right? Absolutely. Uh, what is it that he does that other directors don't? I trust. Exactly <laughs> <laughs> like Rehman <Raymond> says. Yeah, <laughs> and that's scary. <laughs> um, it's just uh, it can't be put down to words. Um, Firstly, uh, like he just uh, mentioned earlier in another interview, which is which is a fact. Uh, I have been uh, an admirer of their work, right? So uh, as millions, and uh, to have gotten the opportunity when finally I, as a, a student, the night before, and uh, then that Miss World and all that just happens, and then you know you're all along, you're being courted, you're being you know kind of invited into the industry. 
uh, by uh, very, very respectable uh, directors. And uh, it's all there. But then I know my truth. And I know that I'm, I... Uh, I'm coming into this world of cinema where it's 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 not a fly by night thing for me it's it's not about the glitz and the glamour and it's not about uh, the peripherals it's about uh, uh, belonging to this uh, world that I respect the creative uh, you know forces that come together and create this magic in and um, I want to contribute I want to be part of this as an artist and um, uh, it involves learning. I'm forever a student till this minute. And that was my beginning. And then to have got the opportunity for even a call from him, I was way, I mean, over the moon and all. Again, these are all like trivial words to actually express what I was feeling. And then I, uh, he wonderfully said, uh, Iruvar, uh, your role in this, this is not a launch film. I'm not launching you. And this is not about all that. These are the characters. This is what you'll be seeing. This is the movie I'm making. And I was like, yes, I want to be part of a Mani Ratna movie. Mani sir, this film is, of course, uh, a sort of Herculean labor of love, right? And, and expectations are massive. Uh, it is arguably the greatest novel in Tamil literature. I was speaking to a colleague who writes about Tamil cinema, and she was saying that her and her friends actually went on a PS1 sort of traveling tour because yeah. you go to the locations that are mentioned in this yeah. novel, right? The fandom is so <clears throat> frenzied. Uh, and yet there is uh, a part of the country, this part of the country, where we're not so familiar with these characters, with what happens. How did you wrestle with that? You know, uh, creating a work of art that pleases the purists, but also seduces the rest of us. I think it was there in the book. It's there. I think it's there. You don't have to know. You don't have to know. People who have become big fans of the book, before they read the book, they probably didn't know that much about Chola's either. You know, I mean, this opened the doors and made people more aware of it. And then they started picking up more. So this, in a lot of ways, the book has been path-breaking. You know, it's kind of blended fiction and history very, very well in Tamil. So I think I think it's if you're true to the story, if you're true to the period and convert it, you know, genuinely, then I think it'll it's open for anybody. You know, it's it's cinema, and it's a story. It's about characters. It's about a period of uh, Indian history, and some of the characters were real, and we see how they get formed. Do you uh, agree with the label Tamil Game of Thrones? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. 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 No one's going for that one. <laughs> no. no. This is a very I mean, original uh, yeah. script. Because right. No, yeah. but I think meaning in the sense it's a it's a quest for power and and the the sort of twists and turns and the betrayals and the treachery and yeah. all of that. Maybe Game of Thrones is a English pony. Oh, <laughs> That's right. I love it. I love it. Ashwa, let's talk about Nandini, who's such a beguiling, uh, complex, ultimately sort of tragic figure, you know, in, in a sense. So and, human, no? So human. <laughs> so human. What she wants, why she's angry. Uh, and and uh, I, I heard that um, Rajini sir at the audio launch or the trailer launch said that the film should actually be called uh, Onion Cell V because she's the hero, <laughs> right? Uh, but she's also the antagonist. There are many other characters who call her a she-cobra. And I'm like, wow, who is this woman who's sort of wielding her beauty as a weapon? Like, how did you get into her head? Wow, who is this woman? <laughs> Mani, sir, let's discover her together. <laughs> like, That's precisely she it. She sounds so fascinating. That's precisely it. And discovering her together through his vision was just, uh, I think, as an artist, it's, it's, it's fulfilling to get the opportunity to essay a character like Nandini uh, in a Mani Ratna movie, um, a special experience for an artist. Did you? Um... So maybe Mata Hari got inspired by Nandini. <laughs> <laughs> That's See? right. Let's just trace back <laughs> everything to PS1. Right? <laughs> but did you? The original. Uh, did you uh, sort of hmm? add to the fiction or? Uh, you know, it, was the book required or were the cues from your screenplay? What did you want your actors to do? No, I wanted them to make it real. That's all. I mean, <laughs> Nandini is written in the book. Nandini has been transferred onto the script. 
but it has to come to life in front of the camera. It has, you have to, you know, see what this lady thinks, what is her feeling and what is it that she puts in front and what is behind her. You have to see both sides of it. And uh, that is what, that's the magic of cinema is that what requires, you know, several pages or several paragraphs in a book is brought out by one expression, by yeah. one posture, by one, yeah. you know. So I think when we converted it into film, that is what we went for, went to capture that in um, every moment possible. But how did you decide on the music? Because I saw an interview the two of you did together and you said that uh, he no longer gives you specific song situations. It's more like a mood and a tone. And then the two of you co-create where the music has to come in. Is that how it worked for this film as well? He, there are certain situations he gives, but um, yeah, we're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so for this, what happened was uh, I had done around 10, 12 tunes based on Carnatic and trying to be very authentic and all the stuff. And he didn't even respond to anything. I was trying to play ragas and maybe it's not good enough for him. Then I said, maybe he's trying a very contemporary and, uh, you know, for this today's audience. So we should not be puritanical and think, like, nobody knows what 9th century sounded like. Right. Mm -hmm. So you have, to, you have to use your imagination. So that was the right thing. Then it, it took like two processes to, process to get there. So I said, let's take me to Bali because I heard the conquest of the Cholas in, you know, Indonesia yeah. and Thailand and all this stuff. And there's a legacy of you know, Mahabharata and Ramayana there. So we went to you know certain temples. We just saw the, the monkey chant and you know them singing and the, the kind of pure you know souls they are. And that inspired me a, a lot. And then I did around 20 different ideas, 20 odd ideas. He didn't respond to that for a month. And then slowly picked the one okay, and one. Wait, stop it. When you send 20 ideas and he doesn't respond to a month for a month, what do you do? Or, or this is powerful course, you don't get stressed. No, no, I don't, I don't get stressed. Sometimes you feel like, you know, for, for any creator, mm -hmm. you, you always fear that tomorrow I'm going to get up and I won't get any tunes which is likable. Or nobody's going to like my stuff, they'll throw it on my face. And, and then you cross that. And then, you know, in this I thought, okay, that's it, I'm done. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like any of those. And then slowly he picked up, oh, what about this for this song? I said, okay, one, tick, work. <laughs> And then, and then I think very few tracks were added after that jam session we did. And we went in the Bali, uh, you know, the, the kind of music and the way they did the monkey chant. And you, know, you see that influence actually. Yeah. So what maybe from the 9th century it went and they kept it pure. Who knows? So you know, but that, that's the thing. You're talking about 9th century characters in a book that was written 70 years ago. Mm -hmm. and, and yet the most sort of compelling historical... Cinema is cinema that speaks to contemporary reality. So how does, how does Ponyan Selvan do that? How does it speak to where we are today as people and as a society? I think, I think the content in Ponyan Selvan book is very relevant even today. I mean, the struggle for power, the grouping, the conspiracies that happen within the politics. The politics of it is absolutely yeah, the, the same. There's no... Yeah. From nothing the changes. Nothing changes. <laughs> How's it yes. enduring? And, and we're still in time. It's enduring. Nothing. I mean, Under yeah, power, there's always evil. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Basically. And when there, is, when there is evil, there's always a story. Right. <laughs> right. This is true. Where yeah, there is evil, so, there is a story. So it is very much contemporary. <laughs> huh? Yes. Where there is evil, there is goodness yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're saying those elements are timeless. Absolutely. Absolutely timeless. And... Um, I think the characters are also in that way, shades of us, each one of us you can see within that. And uh, one day when we tried to make it a film, make it into a film, the approach was not to shoot it like a, hmm. like a period film in the hmm. sense like it happened long back, this happened long back and shoot it like from a distance, you know, give it a tone, make it look like, a, like how period films are supposed to be wanted it to be like we were there at that point of time, wanted it to be contemporary. More immersive? Yeah, more immersive and more, I mean, with all the ups and downs and all the dirt and muck and, you know, so that you feel that you're there and it's not like a, 
a distant view of what happened you right. know so right. the the and once that approach was what we went for it kind of defined everything else the way where we would shoot and how much you know what kind of tone that we'll shoot with how whether we'll go with handles and things like or all, all of it gets defined by you know the concept of how to shoot it yeah but five volumes in two films yeah. how did you decide what to keep what to throw <laughs> <laughs> that's a question in every one of no. the films it's that we have i made all it's the actors amazing. they're like shivering what scene would be <laughs> taken off all of them were like how much I don't have know i made off. Is, is, is the scene there is the scene there <laughs> <laughs> but that's always in on every film of his yeah. i think he's he knows yeah, what no, he, the story he wants to tell i think when you convert it into a script in you have to follow some spine and go with it and take that i think i you know my writer told me the the best line that i've heard before the film he says read the book once and then throw it away okay before you do the film then then you write right. you know so you it kind of yeah, yeah so yeah but I think essentially we followed the um, the spine really I mean Kalki's novel goes through one character one character called Vandiya Tevan yeah. and through him we travel and meet everyone else I think Kartney's that is yeah. yeah I think that's a path we've also taken but I think when you you know convert a five part book into two part there's some parts you should know how to skip and crunch and some characters that you leave out and try to get the honesty of this within this i'm sure it can be done as five different films maybe 10 different films is possible but i think um the budget that we had <laughs> did not allow more than this i think two is it two is good enough <laughs> <laughs> but you shot two without waiting to release one that's not something that happens very often here you know everybody who's doing two part projects usually waits to see how the first part does and then even bahubali they shot a part of part 2 but not the whole thing you finished it it if i had stopped to get all of them back in <laughs> that look it wouldn't have been possible <laughs> and two we looked at it this way not as two films mm -hmm. but we looked at it as a, as one story got it it's a 6 hour film you yeah. know so we tried to do it as one stretch you know i mean so it was not very difficult once you have that mindset then it becomes a single film and we try to do that well you got know. that from the beginning from him though oh. he was all along telling his story he was making his whole film yeah and then you does he then the master of editing and decides how no, he what he'll keep what he'll do and how he chooses to intrigue the audience by making it into two because there's so much to yeah. tell as you saying five volumes even to two is like huge yeah but all along um, he was making his film he was telling his story you know and that's something i got from the beginning uh, from him that's fascinating i mean to to stay sort of the course for what 150 days and and just keep going and and maybe you should look at once part 2 is released sort of do the 6 hour cut <laughs> you know mm -hmm. fans come in to see mm -hmm. they spend half their day watching it at length yep. right that could Coming be amazing someone who loves cinema see she's already <laughs> dropping it yeah yeah no, just you know just for some of us it. <laughs> consider it consider it um yeah you said in an interview that you should try to be uncluttered in your art because there is so much clutter in life mm. which is so lovely how do you do that so how do you try to be uncluttered in your art i think there's so many distractions even mm. as an artist you get called for many things mm. so you need to find where to stop yeah. like uh, where to stop and how not to overthink how not to be too smart too smart actually in spots so you have to leave certain things to chance to nature to the universe to god to sort things out so just be on your mission like the gita says do your karma mm. rest leave it to and i love that and um, i feel like sometimes people say hey this movie is a very small movie why is so working so hard but my work mm. but yeah, i think mm. 30 years later who knows who's going to hear this but if i if i feel like this is less or this is more i'm not being true to my work mm. and the true even if one person sees one person hears a song you should feel my sincerity you should feel the team sincerity and and with with him again i told you about the trust 
when he trusts you so much, you feel like tyranny. You feel like, oh my God, what am I going to do? So I'll score it with the keyboard. And he'll say, oh, that's fine. I said, no, no, it's not fine. We'll get rear brass from, you know, Budapest and we'll get Firdos Orchestra. We'll get Chennai strings to do this stuff. It's sounding good. Why is he doing this stuff? Mm -hmm. You know, but then with today's technology, the more you, you know, sometimes less is also very more. Yeah. The more is about quality, about even bitrate and how you record and frequencies, which so people notice all this stuff because now it's very explicitly clear. Yeah. Yeah. So you just stay the course and don't put value judgments on any project. It doesn't matter budget, no. stars, nothing. It's all equally important. Absolutely. And people like him, if you do 1x, they make it look like 10x or 100x. So <laughs> it's convenience for us. <laughs> Yeah. He's just I'm, a nice guy. <laughs> no, 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 no. Says nice things. Okay, okay, let me tell you. Let me tell you. So now she comes into the project with the respect as a guru. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So now I got a song and she sings, lip syncs it. It goes 50x. Yeah. Right? So it depends. The song can be sung by anybody. It could be lip sung by, you know, you know, people do all this stuff. So that's what I'm talking about. So when somebody's searching for excellence, your work gets. In multitudes. Like, I mean, you get the opportunity yeah. to work with talent like this. Your work actually, <laughs> you know, is, is even noticed or even appreciated or even analyzed or even <laughs> critiqued. But yeah. you actually get to work with talent like this. So yeah. uh, it's all synergy. And, you know, I mean, as we listen, as we talk, we keep hearing the, uh, the core is spiritual connect. It's about staying true. It's about authenticity. It's about being genuine in and earnest in your commitment. So, I mean, you'll hear these words oft repeated when we speak, but then that's the that's the unifying uh, uh, creative thread, mm -hmm. dare I say, yeah. where uh, the the I think the um, the attitude towards our uh, craft is pretty much that. It's about just staying true and. Uh, being hungry and looking to, I mean, if whenever he says that, you know, I did 20 and presented and then you wait and then you mm -hmm. kind of see, we are all doing that on set also constantly. You'll do a take and while you think, ah, that will then you just get the, so you know, like, okay, you haven't hit it. And then when you think you haven't hit it is when he's like already moved from behind the camera. It's a cut and he's gone. And you're like thinking that worked, like what happened? But he knows what he got. And it's just about keeping that search, keeping that, that creative hunger, um, you know, wetted, and you just you you love it. You actually, it's it's uh, it's very very uh, satisfying and uh, confusing, and uh, at the same time, you know, it's it's um, infectious. It's it's. Somebody great. told me yesterday. Sorry, huh. all of them are heroes. They all work <laughs> as single hero. All of them are joined together yeah. with the trust that this master is going to make it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, no, look absolutely. at this galaxy yeah. of stars. Yeah. It's incredible. Them, look at the damage. pressure that faith. you're putting on me. We work in <laughs> That's what they said. Yesterday they said that. Only you could have brought them. That's together. the journey. No, it's yeah, the journey. Yeah. And like you're saying, now you're sitting back and you're smiling. Jenna, then you let yeah. the film know what it has to do. Yeah, yeah, each one of them. But so, so tell me, the ultimate compliment from Mali sir is when he's finished and gone on to the next set. He's already moved. Huh. Mm -hmm. He's already moved then you know, on to the, the next set. You were good. Yeah. <laughs> it's done. Now he's more indulgent. <laughs> he's been more indulgent, no doubt. It's very, very easy. Now when you get a yeah and all that, you're like flying. It's like amazing. Oh, he just come in. One, that one scene and suddenly from behind there was this. And then suddenly there was a hand on the you know, on the shoulder, you're like, oh my God, he's here. And he's actually <laughs> just done this. It's amazing. <laughs> but then I think that's, that's the way we work with your guru, right? You're just waiting to, you, you don't know when, what, how. And it's just magical when you actually get that, even just the smile and the nod. <laughs> 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 what are you doing now? Oh my God, that's amazing. I mean, the most incredible thing for huh. me is 40 years and still making movies, yeah. <laughs> which is relevant. Yeah. Yes. Which is cutting edge. Yeah. There's so many people have learned from him. A whole generation. Yeah, a whole generation. Absolutely. And, and still he wants to do it. And yeah. that is yeah. a statement. Yeah. And, this, and what and a this, movie. And doing COVID time. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Under the circumstances, my gosh, to have done this, to made movie, so, yeah, both the parts already. Under the circumstances. He's was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Kurosawa did it yeah, when he was 18. 18. <laughs> and what a film he did. Uh, so, so tell me, sir. In this 
making two films during covid all that you had to deal with like this galaxy of stars and and incredible technicians look at the technical crew on this yeah. film uh, did you ever have a day when you felt overwhelmed does money sir ever get stressed i'm stressed every day <laughs> what i'm saying i'm stressed basically with my work that i start off thinking that i don't know how to shoot this you think that i really don't think so. i yeah i Which don't know how to make you look I at start camera we don't believe that you always yeah that. yeah I, I, sometimes when you start a film you have no clue how to get into it i mean there is a way and then it leads you but the same thing happens with the scene when a scene is there it's all right to sit on a table and write about it but you have to get six different people to exchange what do you do how do you shoot it you now so you have to constantly figure a way out and you have to constantly see that there is something extra that happens some magic that happens in terms of performance in terms of you know the pause in terms of angles you know in some way you know that the actors feel that they are in real position and not doing it for the camera so i mean that search is kills you no <laughs> so every film is like you know is every scene is really you know difficult to actually shoot but if you manage to shoot it and slightly better than what you thought you would then you feel good about it but sometimes you don't when you go back in the car you realize that you missed one shot maybe i should have taken it like that i mean that's that doesn't change it yeah. there from the first film but it was incredibly calm during the making of this no screaming i ca- incredibly <laughs> i'm not about screaming no incredibly calm and i, I never scream i was never screaming i was screaming no it, <laughs> you still <started> screaming <laughs> yeah as you, as you expand the more people i think that's when they understand no oh, he's not upset let's not do that <laughs> i do i do pretend that i'm angry <laughs> That's so funny. You don't scream. I don't pretend. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you're not a screamer. You're I am I'm a screamer. Well, I've seen but I've, in I've my seen mind I'm not a screamer. I will scream. I scream. I scream. Ask the assistants. <laughs> Yeah, even Lula. this one still i mean given yeah, the calm. magnitude of what you were she doing she seen my worst so she <laughs> thinks this is better he's better be able <laughs> grown up grown up well i live with the ultimate streamer so i'm sure you're much better be him <laughs> sh- i'm sure you're way more elegant okay last the dictionary of bad words <laughs> I know poor AR has been subjected to, you know he's no, seen no. him in full flow though never at you he loves you loves no, that's a great experience yeah yeah and he he saw the trailer of the film and just loved it but but before i leave i have to ask all of you if you were to speak to people in this part of the world again people who don't know ponian selvan uh, what is the one thing about this story that you love and you really want to share with people so we'll start with you've been a fan for decades yeah yeah i think i think this is an adventure you know i mean this is probably the first adventure novel that i've read in tamil in indian language and uh, i think it's written so well so excitingly you know that it is meant for cinema it's a page turner yeah, and not only a page turner it is a it's a imax <laughs> <laughs> that's what the book says no right. it's an, that this is an imax film do it like that no how wonderful that's terrific ashwara you heard it from the master himself <laughs> um it's um like we were saying right from the outset i think uh, human drama and the politics uh, of the narrative is ever enduring and uh, to actually go and get an insight into a piece of history and what history even though fictionalized is um, fascinating to see, to experience it in a mani ratnam uh, movie a mani ratnam narrative uh, and um, you know with with his music to actually uh, evoke uh, that kind of um, an audience experience in a theater i think it's it would just be fascinating to view experience and live with this narrative for what it is in my opinion i think people lack motivation now mm-hmm. and um, most of us don't know why we are born so we look at south india this movie actually emphasizes on the achievements of your ancestors 
Yeah. When you see that, you get inspired. Oh my God, I live in such legacy. What am I doing? I, I just can't celebrate that legacy. I just want to do something. Mm. I think it's going to evoke that passion. And even if you look at uh, cultures, there's a people condescend. Okay, you are from south, you are from north, you are from east, from west. I think it's so important to revive and show people what we're made of. And this, I feel that this would end all that, you know, divide, and it will help us celebrate each other. Sounds terrific. Yeah. When I when am I seeing it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, and and all best for the film. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.